things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. So tonight, the truth is going to be unfiltered and full of flavor. Please welcome Dana McCool and Eric Ramundo, bringing you the smoking truth. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Dana McCool. How are you doing, my dear? I am good. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing well. Um, Taste is kind of a mellow day for me. I'll it really is. I don't feel incited about anything. I'm not, except for the one thing, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, a couple of things come, came my way I'll talk about, but I just, um, but I'm just feeling kind of mellow. I walked in the, in the shop, like sometimes I'm walking like... I walk in sometimes a little amped up mm -hmm. or it's just, no. been, it's just been one of those days. And uh -huh. I'm just kind of like, Oh my God. But today was just, and we had time to debrief today. Yeah. And so the, it was a mix of today was just a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. The weather was just soft. Yep. Me, let me tell everybody something before we get into everything else. Let me, I know Florida summers are brutal yeah, and they're miserable a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I personally do not care for them as much uh, as I get older. For some reason, I'm not, liking them as much as I did when I was younger, but anyways, <laughs> but the winners, right? And so uh, my daughter tells me, she said, dad, you know, the problem with Florida is only two seasons, hot and cold. And that's it. Like, yep. or hot and cool. So, but I always tell folks whenever they, you know, look, look at Florida for one reason or another, I always tell them, so listen, some of the best winners, if you don't care for the snow mm -hmm. are right here in Florida from that mid October ish mm -hmm. time frame to about March into March. Um, is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You get April. Uh, April starts to kick up a little bit, but not as bad. You get start getting into that mid May, man, and you through <sighs> sept mid September. You're like, oh my god, when is it going to end? And so within the last week or so, it's been pretty much we're getting into that season. Mm -hmm. And today was just one of those days where I had the windows down, yep. right? I mean, you know, and I'm just kind of like, oh, it was, it was just so good. Anyways, so I was out on the bike today. Oh, we're, oh, yeah. uh, oh, yes, I noticed that because I yeah. saw the helmet. Yeah. I was out on the motorcycle today. Good for you. Good for you. So nice. And oh. look, I want to show you something. Well, what happened? Hold on. Yeah. Oh my God, she's got her <laughs> Harley. Or actually, they're actually cute boots. They're, they're her her Harley Davidson lime, like, lime green, green boots. <laughs> they're amazing. They are cute, my dear. I'll they're say amazing. that. So, so you can see me at night. That's how I justify it. I, so I was going to say. So she doesn't have a road vest, uh, everyone. But she definitely has the boots that look like they want to glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I have a road vest for night. Do you? Yeah. Okay, good for you. Good yeah, for you. Do. All right. Uh, anyways, hey everyone, please uh, don't forget to follow us on YouTube. Catch us uh, on there. You know, uh, OG puts all the graphics on there to remind you to go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. This way you're notified every Tuesday when it, when it um, does drop. Share with your friends, please, always. Let them know that we're on, that if they want to catch stuff on just Volusia County in general. Mm -hmm. I know at times we tend to be a little bit Deltona-centric um, just because it's kind of our home base, but we try to cover uh, everybody as much as we possibly yep. can. We are going to... Uh, We'll start trying to get things going again with having some other folks on from the east side. Uh, I think um, we actually have someone coming on soon, Dana, right? Next, the, not next Friday, but the fri the 10th. The 10th. November, November the 10th. November 10th. Uh, Jason Leslie Jason is coming. Leslie, yeah. He's running for uh, Ormond Beach um, um, City Mayor and um, or City of Ormond Beach Mayor. And so he's going to come on. Mm -hmm. But uh, th this is, once again, folks, uh, if you're listening out there, if you're running for office or if you've already, you know, you threw your hat in the ring, so to speak, uh, just go ahead and let us know. We'll get you on. And, yep. you know, and, we, and, and because we're starting a little earlier than we did last time, because last time we started the show, when in we September. first started the show, we started in September. So it was already kind of, we were a little bit yeah. late to the game. Um, but this time around, we have a whole, whole like eight, nine, 10, 11 months to go. Yeah. So if you want to come on and we may end up having you. Two, three times, you know, just yeah. depends on the situation. And uh, so if you really want to get, try and get your message out, normally the format is we don't, uh, we do not allow you to go after your opponents. That's not what the show is all yeah. about. The show is more to just talk about you. And also if issues come up where, so people know where you stand on some of those issues and then let people decide how they want to vote. Yeah. Um, so that said, don't forget all the major podcasts as well. Uh, you can catch us on, you know, Spotify, Podbean, whatever it is. And then you can also, I also post over to Facebook. Facebook tends to be where the, I guess the audience, because maybe it's an older crowd, um, they like to just go ahead and take a look at it. And so don't forget, and I'll post on a couple different pages as well, too, just so that way it gets enough. And then we go from there. And so with that said, I have trusty Elvis. Wait. Shh. Who's your lover? My lover this week is, I'm coming down to the end of it because we're waiting for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <it's> a, <laughs> 
Uh, it is a Romeo and Juliet reserve real. It's the uh, twisted. Mm-hmm. So and uh, so are we. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that, I was in that little bit of mood today. Yeah. So good for you. Yeah. I yeah. noticed that you were mellow when you walked in because we had an hour up there because yeah. our great friends they had. Um, I was busting his butt, but they have uh, Sam. Uh, oh God, Eric. Right. What? Eric, who did they? Who did the guys do the podcast with just now? Oh, Eric Espinosa. Yeah. yeah, and Jack Taranio. Yeah. yeah, so so they had them down, and they're a bunch of great guys. There's a great event going on, Smashing Pumpkins tonight. Espinosa Cigars will be in the house tonight. Um, there's going to be OG. Tell them what there's going to be because I really, I mean, I like. I know it's after the fact, right? But the thing right. about it is, they need to understand what's going on in the community so we can get them engaged. What's well, going we on? We do Smashing Pumpkins every year. Yep, it's, it's it's one of our biggest events we do upstairs. Uh, you buy cigars, and depending on how much, unfortunately, money you've spent, you get to pick a pumpkin off a different tier. There's three tiers. Yep. And then you take that pumpkin outside, you smash it on the ground, you throw it up in the air, whatever you want to do, and then yep. there's a colored chip inside, and that chip tells you what kind of gift you get. Yep. Yeah. And there's some great gifts. There's, yeah. a, good, there's a lot of uh, Guy Fieri autograph stuff up there. Some of his tequilas yeah, the, up there. Last, last year I did boxes. it, and yeah, no, it's it's awesome stuff, man. Last year I did it, and it was cool. I got actually nice little, uh, some st- cool stuff that I got, and I was mm-hmm. just kind of, oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Love it. <laughs> Love it's it. a good time. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. You go. You get to go outside in the parking lot, folks, and either toss it up. Just don't toss it onto Deltona Boulevard, please. <laughs> no, no, we stay far enough away. Yeah, so we're fine. but you get to toss it up in the parking lot, and it blows up, so the speaker smashes, and you get to get the chip, and then you'll you'll yeah. know exactly. And what it's to double do. great tonight too. You know why? Because Llama's cooking their meats downstairs. Oh, that's Down right. Latin American Motorcycle Association. Yeah, so they're I, doing a barbecue too. They're oh doing a barbecue. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. always a great time. They always have good music. Yeah. So if you ride a motorcycle, I really highly suggest getting involved with a local motorcycle chapter yeah. because there's a lot of great stuff. Llama helps out the community a lot around here. Yeah. They are amazing, amazing people uh, next door. And so just get involved. And it's one of, so actually kind of something I wanted, it's actually a perfect segue. You talk about the whole motorcycle thing. So mm-hmm. obviously it is October mm-hmm. and in Florida, especially in Volusia County and more specifically Daytona beach. Bikes over fast, baby. Bike tober fast is going on right now. And so I want to put a, a disclaimer out to very, please be careful. Um, the mm-hmm. motorcycle folks are all out. They've come, they're coming from all over the country to come here to, um, to Daytona beach. And for those who live in and around the central Florida, specifically the uh, central Florida area, please be careful. Uh, these folks are coming. They're, you know, they're coming here to our state to spend dollars in our state. Um, it's always a great time at Biketoberfest, and um, and so just be careful with the, with the folks out there uh, yep. out there riding the motorcycles. Look um, twice, save a life. Yeah, because I know it's getting busy. I mean, I was out and about today, and I know it's a lot of motorcycles out there. So for those of us who live in Lucia County, I know it's a lot of motorcycle folks. But listen, man, they're just like anybody else. They're just trying to have a good time. They're coming visiting our state, visiting our county, and so um, my hats off. My father's been riding motorcycles forever, so I have tremendous respect for um, for folks who. Or out there. Wait, you never got into bike? No. Motorcycle? Can I tell you the reason why? Yeah. I love speed too much, mm-hmm. and uh, and I've always said I'd kill, end up killing myself on a motorcycle. So mm. there you go. Okay. Ch- check that box. Eric does not do that. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I enjoy riding. I don't enjoy riding in large crowds. I, the, yeah. the whole formation, it just whatever. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and I there's a it. lot of amateurish crap that goes on. You it know? looks cool, though, doesn't it? Though? I mean, I, 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 yeah. Okay. No, what I'm saying though is, is like I love so when I'm on the highway sometimes, I, or if I've been on 95, and there's like 15 motorcycle uh, I- individuals coming from a particular group, man, I just mm-hmm. think it's like the coolest thing. Like they're all just riding and saying, mm-hmm. the hair is flowing. If they're not wearing helmets, if they are, it is what you know. That's fine. Um, but I you just, know what I call people that ride without helmets, right? What organ donors? God, <laughs> I'm not even, listen to each is on the beautiful, the beautiful thing yeah. about Florida is that it, there is no mandate yep. on it. You get to, however you see fit, you do it. Just be just number one, please be careful. The motorcycle riders, please be careful. And yep. for those who are riding cars and uh, a little frustrated with, because there's so many of them, please be a little be extra careful. patient. Uh, yeah. yeah I careful. was out today and, um, that's especially true coming off of side streets. You yeah. know, oh, I, yeah. I ride and I was out riding today because it was really nice, hence the riding boots on. Yeah. Um, and it was really nice. And for the most part, man, I, you know, if somebody pulls up behind me yeah. and they're not a car links behind me, I, I turn around and they know that I'm looking at them. Because if yeah. you don't know this, you need to place a vehicle's length between you and a motorcycle for sure. If you're not yeah. doing it as a driving courtesy anyways, you should be doing it with motorcycles. That means when I pull up in front of somebody, 
there's a car length between me. So don't get pissy yeah. because here's what happens. Somebody rear ends me, yeah. right? Even at a, even at a low speed oh, and yeah. I'm not, beh- and I'm not directly behind them. Chances are that I'm going to be safer. Right. And, and so when you pull up behind anybody in a motorcycle, please, for God's sake, stay a vehicle's length because it's not about you hitting them. It's about somebody rear ending you and then you rear ending them. Yeah. I try to, when I come to a stoplight, I Definitely with them, I give them a lot more latitude than I would if it was a car. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I know I should. And I should stay a couple, at least you know a little bit. But with motorcycle riders, because I know the implication right there. Yeah. Because it's it. So imagine if if somebody bumps me from behind and I hit a car, it's one thing. But if I'm hitting a motorcyclist, uh, yeah, they're they're coming off the bike. Yeah, I'm just exactly. telling you right now. Exactly. And, and they, there's a good chance they may fly. There's possibly they may fly into right. a car in front of them if depending how car close they are to exactly. as well. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I want to uh, ask you something. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, did you or like were you cooking drunk again? How'd you burn yourself? Oh, you no, 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 no. I've that, been looking at that since you were upstairs. Yeah, I have t- actually two. Somebody else noticed it today, too. No, that was about a week ago. I was uh, I had something in the oven. And when I, I thought, anyways, I thought I cleared it. And I think the racks were a little too close. I was a little lazy. I didn't want to pull the, the top rack up a little higher. Oh, yeah, okay. And I was putting in something. It was like a pizza pan. I forgot. It may have been one morning. Maybe I had like biscuits on there or whatever, right? And so I was putting... The rack back in, and it caught me right here. And so, you know, <laughs> there's that. And then I got scraped because I was like changing a part in my wife's car. And, you know, I just was like, my hand goes in there, being a typical guy, just doing my thing. And a scrape, I don't know, scrape yeah. here, scrape there, scrape there. <laughs> Yeah, no. This is all I want to say. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was fine, like all manly, putting a yeah. pizza in the oven. Yeah. But the moment you said biscuits, like I saw you in an apron. Putting biscuits. First of all, yeah. Eric does not do an apron. <laughs> uh, and secondly, so listen, man, there is nothing unmanly about throwing biscuits know, in the oven. But did you make them from scratch? Hell no, I don't make them from scratch. <laughs> okay, well that helps. I'd love me some Pillsbury, especially the no, 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 Mary B's, Mary B's. If you go to, do, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, because my so my daughter and I we love was it that there's uh, I guess the buttery one uh, that they have and then um, I buy the southern one every once but the buttery one and man it goes so well so if I'm doing like bacon with eggs and cheese so it's like our version of a you know a bacon egg and cheese biscuit mm-hmm. right from McDonald's. And my daughter put me on to, it's like, I'm not the biggest fan of American cheese, right? Like, I love cheddars and all the other che- cheeses, right? I'm mm-hmm. a big fan. Um, and so, but my daughter, she told me one day, she said, Dad, there's nothing like putting American cheese when you're doing like a bacon, bacon egg and cheese. Bacon. Don't put no cheddar on there. No, she's right. It's all so, oily. Yeah, so I put the I put the American cheese. I hadn't done it in a long time. And I put it on it and I was just, so one morning I got up and I was just sitting there going, oh my God, baby, you are so right. <laughs> this is like <laughs> melting in my mouth. Like, this is so heavenly. It's, it's <laughs> creamy and melty as opposed to oily. I know. And, yeah. It's like cheap American whatever and what I mean by that is just like god Americans with their American cheese but I'm telling you it just hits it's, it's like, like a, a cheeseburger like I love cheeseburgers with uh, like different types of cheese yeah but with American but man <laughs> There's nothing like American cheese on a burger, Spoken man. Spoken like a true stoner. I love you, oh, man. God. Like, I'll go to, like, if I, like, so in, in in London, they, you know, different places also now pick up the whole burger thing, right? And so you go to London, and they have places where you can get cheeseburgers as well, or just burgers in general. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate the stuff, like, don't throw halloumi cheese on there, and, and I've had it all, the, the, you know, feta on there, whatever it is. But, man, I'm going to tell you, there is nothing like having American cheese. Y'all mm-hmm. can say what you want. Maybe most of you agree. I'm just saying there's nothing like having American cheese on a But burger. you have to, here's the thing. You yeah. have to have cheddar cheese and, and grits. Yeah. You can't be American cheese. No, it has to be no. Cheddar cheese and grits. So, when I, yeah, so if I do, so most people don't realize I've come up north, right? And so we don't have grits up north. But when I came down to Florida, you know, so my boss told me one time, oh, your version's like that, uh, what is it, that? Not, cream oh, of wheat. Yeah, cream of wheat. <laughs> Right. And I, so I was just sitting there, and so I kind of grew up so a little bit. Whoever invented that needs the death penalty. Well, I kind of grew up on a couple <laughs> different things, right? We got in Spanish, we call Havana, which is basically like cornmeal. Wait, meal. say that again? Havana, which is H A B. E and A, Havana, right? Which I think is B. Anyways, and so that's like basically cornmeal type stuff. You mix it up, whatever the case may be, right? But um, I also had cream of wheat. Come down to Florida, and there's grits. And I'm going to tell you something. My wife and I, we love grits. I love cheesy grits. I love shrimp and grits. Like, and, and my boss and I went one time out to Marion County. We were checking out a prison facility. On the way back, we stopped in this local restaurant in Marion County, and they had cheesy grits. And let me tell you, it was actually pretty damn good. I, good I was like, Keith, this stuff is pretty good. He's Here's like, the thing, yeah. okay? Uh. Cheese grits mm. with bacon. Yeah. Oh yeah. And an overlight egg. 
Really? Oh my! Yeah, my damn. wife can't. She won't be able to do that, but I could. Yeah, mm. wow, that sounds yeah. good. I'm just yeah. putting you on that. No, but I, no, I'm a big fan of grits. I love grits. Every yeah. chance I get to get them, I I, I do. And especially if it's cheesy grits, I, I just. And I will eat. tell you, I'll choke you out if I see you putting sugar in grits. No, I never do that. I'll no, no, choke no, no, you no, out. no, because yeah. it's dude. So grits are meant to be just what they are. That's it. It's yeah. grits with shrimp, because then the grits will take on. If there's anything else, so added to here's it, how. Right? Listen, yeah, because shrimp and grits are one of my favorite meals to make. Okay. Okay. The grits have to be made mm. with chicken stock. You need oh, a savory grit for shrimp and grits. Oh. Yes. I didn't know that. Okay. And best grits on the planet, mm. two best grits on the planet, mm. okay, are bloody butcher grits. They're made with a red corn. They're oh. hearty. Use that for, for yes, use that for wow. shrimp and grits. I haven't had that yet. And then Geechee grits. Geechee grits are from... South Carolina. Really? Yes. Mm. And they have something special, mm. briny in the water or something there. Yeah. When they grow the corn for the grits there, out of this world. Out Geech- of this world. Hey, ugly. so if anybody <laughs> knows in Central Florida where to get the, the Geechee grits. Or the- you order them. You order them online. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. where I get mine. And the Bloody Butcher grits. Yeah, but I want them to cook. I want to cook because I'll screw it all up. Like, dude, you I'm, don't not, cook I'm, I'm not Southern, so I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm going to screw cook. it all I'll up. I'll come over. We'll do shrimp and grits one time. All right, I'll all come right. over. I just, man. You and the doc. I'll cook for you and the doc and your daughter. All right. All, all right. right. Oh, another thing too. Uh, last weekend they did the uh, Friday night uh, Friday night bites yeah. at uh, West Crow. Yeah. So I had never been, and I went. And so my son told me, "Hey, and there's a there's a particular food truck that goes. I've seen that city the Barry when they do their Friday night, mm-hmm. um, their first Friday of the month, and then over at West Crow on, on Friday night bites they usually get um, the food trucks over there as well. And there's yep. a, I think one of the trucks is called Wings and Things. Yeah. They actually do a good job, man. And I've had gotten like the grog parmesan, the teriyaki, they do a really good the mild job. buffalo because I, I don't go too crazy. General but. So, General So Wings. Yeah. Oh. oh man they actually yeah. do the they do a good job yeah, they do. and I, it's every time they did so my son every time he knows already for me and my wife when, when i know they're around and about and just like they, hey wings and things i'm there yeah yeah so anyways all right, let's move on all right. to politics right. kyle where did we go we just went down the hole for 15 we minutes. did and it's good to do that because i think okay. you feel like people just want to like hear okay what's going Sometimes, on with Dan and Eric yeah, yeah, personally you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. A little bit, so. Sometimes, no they don't care um Crap. so I, i've been hearing things a little bit and folks i know i get a little deltona centric <laughs> right ahead. now but i just feel like i and this could apply to any city right but i anyways i i've been hearing some stuff and this goes back to a comment i made once before on the show about mm-hmm. Commissioners and their role, um, city staff and their role. Mm-hmm. That can't be talked about enough. Yeah, and I and I will tell you that what I don't, what I see happening, and if I said once before in the show too that if Deltona, and when I mean Deltona, not the residents, but the city commission, right, and all of them up there, and then and the, the, the maybe the ivory tower, if you want to call it for Deltona, if they don't figure out, I know that includes kind of you too, because I know you're a commissioner, but I'm just saying just in general. The more we mess around internally, like, oh, I got my little spies internally in city, in city hall, mm-hmm. which is bad. If you're doing that, it's wrong. I already man. know who the mole is. And I just kind of like, and I hear things, I'm going, that's bad. And I just, and so, and then everybody's, and then I see, I hear, because people still talk to me, and it's not just coming from Dana. And then so, I don't want nobody sitting there going, oh, Dana loves you talking to her. No. Dude, I, I talk to more people than just Tana, all right? And I would just tell you that I hear things all the time, and I'm just kind of going in, in the, you know, the, the, the whispers that pass in the wind, and I hear things like, oh, I got a mole, you know, somebody's got a mole here, or staff is talking to commission here and there, and I've always said, at the end of the day, the diocese's responsibility is to the city manager and city mm-hmm. manager to the diocese. And the city manager controls the day-to-day operations. And the minute the city commissioners start getting involved and everybody's playing games, because I know who you are. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to call you out in the show, but I'm going to tell you right now, I know who you are. Yep. And there's a couple of you up in that diocese playing dumb games. Well, guess what? Your city, the city that you live in, will not change until you change. Preach, and that goes from any from one city commission to the next. You keep playing those games, and I've said this before. This is what's plagued this city for a long time. It's the constant games that get played, and everybody has their little favorites and has their little moles here and there. And blah, blah, blah. Look, man, stay out of that. Let the city manager deal with that nonsense. And if they can't, and we start hearing, and you all start hearing things like, hey, we got major like employee issues going on. Then take it up with the city manager and figure out what to do next, and let them and put them on notice. And, and can I tell you something? Yeah. If if not now, like more than yeah. ever, city manager is way approachable. 
Yeah, I uh, love yeah. him. I love him. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something. There's an air of calmness mm -hmm. with him there. Yes. I respect been, him so much. That. Yeah, yeah. I respect him so much that I just say, okay, boss, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and my thing is I've had a working relationship now for more than five years, more than mm -hmm. since I was elected, yeah. right? With, with uh, different staff, yeah. right? And, and my, my thing when I'm talking with them is always caveat is to, and the city manager knows, mm -hmm. always know that I've talked to them because I go get information yeah. from them uh, and inform them of things. But as far as direction and as far, no. And there will never be a day that I'm not going to walk by people's office and tell them what a great job they're doing. You because, know what I'm saying? But I don't, I don't try to say, oh, what, you know what I'm saying? Because, I, Dan, it also, it, because I always go back to this. The culture of any organization starts with its, with, with its leadership, right? Mm -hmm. However, if you start circumventing that leadership and doing things like playing these little games with staff and this, that, and the other, like, so I, once again, I go back to the interim city manager right now. Mm -hmm. Bless him. Yep. I know he's got a, a task at hand because of just the per, the personalities. And I and correct me if I'm wrong. I know he wasn't crazy about taking. I think he wanted to retire soon, or whatever case may be. Or mm -hmm. I, I don't know how true that is or not. But anyways, I do believe because I've heard from multiple people already that there is a level of calmness that comes with this individual, and I appreciate that. There I is. really do, and I, I can't. And and we probably need that so badly for our folks. And, 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 and I think there is in that calmness, I think there is this true sense of leadership. And my only thing is if your staff appreciate that, stop the mole bull crap, mm -hmm. the bullshiggity mole crap. Yeah. Stop all that nonsense, please. Let the city commission be, they got to figure it out for themselves. You're not there. You're not there as a plant for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, and I and pre appreciate the fact that I think you have a very good, calm interim city manager who's trying to do the best that he can until the city commission decides who that next individual is going to be. Yeah. And, uh, and it's a shame too, because if you go down four or five months down the road, six months on the road and you have somebody like that and you're kind of like, wow, maybe I'm not always, you know, subscribing to that thought. If you guys are going to go out, you guys are going to go out and find somebody. But when you have that and things are working, you go, man, you, I, I, I know what I, I'm I love to keep I know this what guy. I, I know what I'm looking for in yeah. a city manager after having yeah. worked under three city managers yeah, now. Yeah. I know what I am looking for, and I know what I'm not, well for now. Yeah. Uh, I know what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. and I know what I'm not looking for. As you know what yeah. I mean, as as me. So, it's been a it's been a good. I respect this one so much that yeah. I. Respecting him, it, the best thing I can do is leave him alone. I, I, do you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> preach, please, preach you know again. I, I mean, seriously, leave that is. him alone and, and let, let him, him do his, his job. job. Please, yeah, please, yeah. please. Uh, exactly. Anyways, yeah, uh, exactly. So, um, I'll say right. something I want to talk about yeah. is the state attorney investigation. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. that because there's a lot of rumor and conjecture out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, it is the the. You know, one of the favorite food groups of, yeah, you know, know, certain individuals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just going to leave that there. Uh -huh. um, and I want to talk about that. So, um, first of all, it being actually reported, I have no problem with. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was asked, oh, if, if I hadn't said anything or if the mayor hadn't found out, oh, it would have just gone unreported or whatever. Here's my thing. I believe that this broke during a conversation that I had with a few people, and I'm going to leave who that is mm -hmm. out, right? Yep. It was a group of people, right? Yeah. People that are in leadership positions and um, talked about that, and that's the way that that got put out there. Yeah. So my thing is that <clears throat> when I was in that commissioner's house, mm -hmm. okay, and I said what I said, it is because, not because I thought that the other commissioners were corrupt or any of this other stuff, yeah. right? Right. My reason, I didn't say anything. Anything that I would have said was hearsay. Yeah. Because I wasn't privy to anything that went on yeah. in that place until I walked in and, and then I walked out. Yeah. In and out of that place within 15 minutes. Yeah. And it was thrown out there that my best friend, mm -hmm. Troy. Yeah. Was in the truck with me, yeah, and waited outside for me, mm -hmm. and and then he got hauled in. For which, if I were a personal, if I were uh, somebody, I would sue the city, yeah, for that for dragging me into an investigation that I had nothing to do with, yeah. Which I don't know. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Yeah. You know, because that's baloney, and that is a lot of what um, 
a, a lot of what was said. Now the tapes are out, and then everybody yeah. can see. And there was also made mention of, oh, why did why did I have an attorney? Yeah, because I have a fucking brain. That's why I had yeah. an attorney. Excuse me. I will court. tell you that because the- I have a fucking brain. Because you don't go into any type of any situation with a state attorney without a fucking attorney. And that is so any investigation. To me. Can I tell you this? And I, mean, I apologize. Yeah, no, any any investigation. Whether it be the state attorney's office or maybe it's Department of Children and Family mm-hmm. is doing an abuse case, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm the first one to tell you, you need to lawyer up very quickly. Yep. Because it can spin out of control very quickly, especially yep. if you don't know what you're doing. Yep. Now, obviously, I know you're an intelligent individual. And so I know you know what you're supposed to do. But I will just, you know, even if you didn't have the attorney, I think you could have handled yourself. But there are legal ramifications if you don't have something because you may not have an ear for something that your attorney would. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And so what I would just say is, no, I think you're smart for doing that. And I also want to put something to kind of rest to a little bit uh, because I saw some stuff on the video on the idea, on this notion of what is considered um, sunshine and not sunshine. Mm -hmm. And I want everyone to understand this. And I'm pretty familiar with the sunshine law. Yep. Everybody knows my stance on sunshine. I'm not the biggest fan of the current model because I do believe at a local level, you all should have the ability to talk at, at a bare minimum one on one to mm-hmm. discuss something, right? And if you want to go to an appointment book and see who Commissioner McCool met with another commissioner that day, that's fine. I, that's all good. It's on the record. Yeah, we had a discussion about it. That's fine, right? And so I don't believe in that. You know, we'll wait to workshop, get it done. Like, because I think there's other issues that need to be that need to get worked out on a one on one basis. That mm-hmm. said. The whole idea behind Sunshine was not that a commissioner or two could not be at the same place at the same collusion. time. It was to prevent collusion. It's just, it is to go ahead and so that way you could not deliberate any particular policy issue on that one-on-one for that, like you said, for collusion or corruption and this, mm-hmm. that, and the other, right? Or maybe two-on-one. Maybe there's, you know, maybe it's three commissioners there. The mere fact that you, that you all happen to be in room, it does not mean you're breaking Sunshine. I know that's a perception that it gives a little bit. And I know most residents and, and people who don't fully understand sunshine, that's their first thing is, oh, it's, you're breaking sunshine. No, that in and of itself does not break sunshine. It's one of the reasons why the state attorney said there's probably nothing, there's, there's nothing here. And there's not, because if you forget about this also, personal enrichment. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. The, the people that were involved, mm-hmm. okay, in this, everybody has their opinion. Yeah. Well, on me included. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't escape. I don't escape haters. I have yeah. lots of haters. Yeah. It's something I've grown used to, and it doesn't even bother me anymore. Right? I took a. I, I took a different approach on yeah. that. You know what I mean? Because there are people are going to have a difference of opinion. Always. Will. And you have to love people where they're at. Hurt people. Hurt people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the reason that some people are so obsessed with me is because they're so dissatisfied with themselves and they don't have anything else. And because I'm outspoken and because I have an opinion and because I'm female, because all of my male haters, all of my haters have pretty much been male <laughs> haters. They don't like it threatens their <laughs> machismo. Do you know what I'm saying? When a woman is actually in control, I can see okay? that. I can see that. Especially <laughs> that one person, yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Who, Anyways. Impotence is yeah. real. Uh, That's what I got to say, probably. Anyways, yeah. with that being said, nobody was personally enriched. Yeah. And it's been thrown out, the accusation has been thrown out that the that mayor, or the, the, not the mayor, but the that commissioner that was involved uh, was like, you know, how do I benefit from this? And there was stuff thrown away that he had made bargains with developers for payouts and stuff like that. Whatever you think of the commissioner, Jody Lee, mm. he's, that's not him. Okay. He is outspoken. He is rigorously candid. Mm-hmm. He is a big mouth. Yeah. He, he has his way that he wants to get things done. And he, I think that part of his thing is pretty, he's pretty tired of his residents getting taken advantage of. And I think was eager to try to find the right person to get in the job. And I think that sometimes when you're overly ambitious, mm-hmm. you're not thinking, you know what I mean? No, no, we go step it, by no step. listen, you're 100% right. And yeah. so what I want, it just it could be him or anybody else for that matter. And I, I, and you make actually a very good point. When you get overly eager or and, and, and or ambitious, mm-hmm. and you are also tend to be a very outspoken individual, what I would just say, it's not my style, mm-hmm. but that's fine to each his own, right? I would just tell you that be careful Mm-hmm. Because in your eager and ambition, you could find yourself in a position where yep. I'm not saying it happened in this case, but you could slip up at some point in time and realize that maybe you're talking too much 
And you could fall in that guise of, you know, you're probably skirting sunshine. So yeah. just be careful with all that. That said. And that's lessons learned. And yeah. like I told the newspaper, every one of us is growing in our positions. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Each commissioner, um, each each commissioner, I believe, have, have made mistakes. Mm-hmm. And when I say each commissioner, I'm, an, I'm a commissioner and I'm talking about myself. I've yeah. made a lot of missteps in office. Yeah. Um, some just because I wasn't informed properly, some because of my overambitiousness, some because of my outspokenness, which usually gets me in trouble. And I don't think any of that's for inactivity. But you make yourself a mark. And I think that yeah. you have to be okay with that. But I'm telling you, I don't care whatever you think of, of him or Commissioner Colwell. Nobody sees what they do or ask about what yeah. they do behind the scenes. And, you know, Jody and I don't get along about everything. He and I will butt heads because, yeah. he, you know, we're both very strong personalities. But at the end of the day, I don't see any commissioner up there want to do anything other than do what's best for public interest. There's nobody up there taking a suitcase th- of money home. For I, think, I think they have. Have, no, listen, to that point, I think they have a, um, in their own minds, a vision for mm-hmm. the city, right? And everybody knows already that, you know, Daltona, it's like, okay, let's just get moving in one direction. Let's commit to the one direction. <sighs> yeah. Let's stop, you know, I, City of Daltona always has an issue with stop and go, stop and go, stop and go, right? I think every, I think most people up there are trying to get to a point where they just, let's just go, let's execute, let's get it, let's get the one thing done, let's move on to the next thing mm-hmm. and the next thing and so forth and so on. Um, and so I will say this, that, but that one of my challenges with the sunshine is that it pushes things down to a certain level where everybody's always careful. And so then you hear these things about go betweens and this, that, and the other. And I go, look, I you can't, you, you know can't, that listen, that you can't control that. Yep. You know, if I have a conversation with you and I happen to go to somebody else, well, listen, I heard this, I heard that, whatever, whether I mention your name or go not. Go to the source, for heaven's sake. Well, number one, go to the source, but then also, too, on top of that, remember, that is the implication, uh, that can also is one of those implications of sunshine, is that, you know, people are talking and they know, and you may have an elected official knows, hey, that individual I know will probably talk to another individual. Mm-hmm. And at least, you know, I, I may not intentionally be trying to get my message across. But I, if they talk, I know that my messages are getting across. Yep. And I'm not. And once again, that in of itself may not necessarily constitute some sort of breaking of sunshine. Because remember, the sunshine. Also, and also remember, in all that deliberation too. You know, if I'm a commissioner, you're a commissioner. We're going back and forth. It's also what are you in the other issue of breaking? You know, sunshine or any ethics violations is you know, is somebody benefiting financially from something? Yeah, where You know, exactly. so all that's part of that. But the sunshine portion of the communication. I get all that, um, and you know that's one of my challenges with it. But I, but folks, please understand: just because you see two city commissioners somewhere, does not constitute a breaking of the sunshine. And you better have absolute hard proof. Yeah. Because I see this all the time. You see two commissioners somewhere, and it could be any city. I've seen it happen in places like Port Orange or mm-hmm. Daytona or whoever. Just because they're there somewhere doesn't necessarily mean, like. I've seen commissioners together going, "Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? Oh, I was thinking about going there for lunch." That's not breaking sunshine. That's just two commissioners saying, "Hey, you want to go out for lunch? Yeah, we're gonna go for lunch." And everybody's like, "Oh my god, I saw them together." That's not. And you better have proof. Now, if they're deliberating and you got proof on the deliberation, and they had multiple witnesses going, "Oh yeah, Commissioner McCool and Commissioner Raimundo were sitting there. You know, they were discussing the issue coming before City Delta the following week. Hold it from ball game." You but don't it, know that. But you, supposition does not mean proof. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, here's the thing, too. You know, Deltona has a distinguished past of, you know, non-transparency, untrustworthiness, but yeah. I'm going to go down the list, whatever. And the residents are owed truth and transparency. Mm. You know what I mean? Truth and transparency. Yeah. And here's what happens is that stories get told. Yeah. They will get told the right way. Mm. And then people just take the football and run without ever stopping to ask the people that are actually involved. And so what happens is then now I'm suspicious of you. I don't trust you. And you know what happens then? Then public figures start to insulate themselves from the the residents. Is that, that, that a telephone game, right? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Like it's a telephone game. Yeah. Like folks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I heard from so, and I heard from, and I know we like to all do that a little bit. We're humans, right? But if you got, if, if but if it's chapping you that bad, mm-hmm. go to the source. Yeah. I exactly. heard Commissioner McCool, or I heard the mayor, yeah. or I heard Commissioner, you know, Jody Lee, or I heard Commissioner Caldwell. 
Go to the source. Yep. And if they tell you no, you take it at face value and go, okay, hey, yep. that's it. Until you get proof otherwise. Yeah. But then don't go, well, I had a conversation with Commissioner McCool. Uh, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 and I'm sitting there going, stop, please. And God, we do that so do you much. Know, you know who, like, I mean, and I'm bringing this person up. Be more brandy. Yeah. This is what Brandy will do. Yeah. Brandy will fight you on something and she hears stuff. And, but she'll contact you to get mm-hmm. your take before she... Yeah. Post a word out there. She she will say, I heard this, but I'm clearing this up. Yeah. Right? She goes to the source. If you're going to dissent from government, mm-hmm. at least know what you're dissenting from. Yeah. Right? And just go to Brandy School. I'm just gonna say that, okay? <laughs> because she knows how to she knows how to get to the dadgum source, and that's yeah. what she does. You know I, what I'm saying? And she's a pain in people's butts because she's a bulldog, right? Yeah. But she is very ethical. I wish more people could go to school. So like it's, it's interesting. So I know she was on the show a couple of weeks back, and uh, and I yeah. watched it. We're going to get to work on it next week after next when I come back from Kentucky. On yeah, show. I uh, and I, I saw that I was watching the show, and I know when you said, uh, "Oh, I was," t- I told Eric you were coming on, and she's like, "Uh oh, what did he say?" And I was just kind of like, I, and, and listen, and honestly, Danny was very honest, and I told her honestly, I just said, "Yeah, you, it's good to have her on," mm-hmm. and I and, and and I say that because. I may not always agree 100% with the way Brandy's approaching something, although I will be honest with you. There is something to be said, all right? And I'm just, folks, this is just Eric. There is something to be said for, I would ra- I take it better from someone where I know where they stand. Mm-hmm. You may not like them being outspoken, Respect. but I know exactly where they stand. You know yep. what I don't like? The individual that's sitting there telling you one thing in your face and going someplace Place else. else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Because you may not like Brandy. That's fine. But you know what? At least you know where you stand with Brandy probably 100% of the time. Yep. Or others like her. Yep. What I don't know is from some who are either in politics or think they're in politics, right? And they're playing this game and you're going, and you just go, and... And I've seen a bunch of games. And I just sat there was just kind of like, yeah. And, and and those are the ones that yeah, you'll see me. I'm always usually cordial with everybody. Mm-hmm. But I know who to keep my distance from a little bit at times. And I don't keep my distance from Brandy for no other reason. I just, I just don't go to City Hall and I don't whatever. But when I do watch her, I appreciate her honesty and openness about it. I know it riles some she commissioners. Does her, she, she does her research. I, I know it riles commissioners some, a lot of times and so forth. And I will just tell you, but at least you know what you're getting. Yep. Not some... <laughs> Some indirect e- email or or direct email or a message on Facebook about something and just kind of like, Stupid. hey, you said this publicly and now all of a sudden you're trying to message me behind the scenes about some other nonsense and uh, yeah. contradicting what you said publicly. I'm kind of going, no. And I've always told people pretty much what you see what means what you get. I may not always give you 100% of the answer right there because I'm always trying to be a little careful. Uh, most of it has to do with my job and I'm just trying to be a little careful. I don't mm-hmm. want to say too, too much. Um, for certain reasons, but you, you will, if I tell you something right then and there, I'm pro I am, I'm being as open as I can be at that moment in time. We're trying to give you as much of the information as I think I can give at that moment in time, right. but I'm not going to sit there and go to you. Hey, guess what we're going to do? We're going to pour a hundred million, the Florida legislature is going to pour a hundred million dollars into this and going back. I just told him that because you know, it was just a bunch of BS. I just, I wanted to placate them a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen again. The biggest thing that you just said is that I can respect you yeah. if I find out that you're up and up. But I'm going to tell you, there are some that are just yeah put themselves off as caring. Mm-hmm. Oh, I care about this, and there are people committed to failure. Yeah. There are people in the city of Deltona committed to failure. If you've got to constantly run games, yeah, do me a favor, check yeah. yourself. Yeah, here's the thing. There are people in Deltona that are committed mm. to not finding solutions. Do you know why? Because when you find a solution and you move away from the problem, there are some people that enjoy being in the problem. Oh, yeah. They, they criticize all the time, never provide any alternative, no solution yeah. like that. There is a lady right now um, that I want to mention. Uh, her name is Dory. Okay. Dory Howington. And she came onto the scene, and this woman, let me tell you, she brings up problems, mm-hmm. but she always, she's writing and providing solutions to the problems. And, 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 and I respect that so much because here's the thing. If I'm a community leader, yeah. if I'm a, in an elected position, I have a resident that's going out of their way to provide solution, right, yeah. for a problem. And I'm not taking that and using that simply because, oh, I'm, I'm elected, I know better. 
No, I don't. I can't. There's no way for me to learn all of the stuff that all of these people have yeah. learned and can and add value to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I want to tell you why I admire her, too. We went through the selection process to put people on the city uh, selection for the city manager. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep. And uh, she was in my pool of people to choose, but I didn't choose her, mm. right? Because there was somebody else that had been a resident, had been really involved for a long time. And it wasn't like cronyism. It was just the fact that I knew this person's platform. But I went and talked to her afterwards. And you know what? She was just like, okay, I get that. It's like she wasn't offended. She yeah. she got into the solution. Now what are we working on this? That is the kind of interaction that I love. She is committed to change and mm. to finding solutions, just like Brandy. Brandy mm. doesn't Brandy doesn't come with problems without solutions. There are people out there constantly complaining. Can I tell you something on a, on a state level? Let me tell you, and I and I agree with you. And so there were these um la- these ladies that came up this um this week, and they were talking about you know um life sentences, right? And that you. You know, in the state of Florida, it looks like we probably, according to them, statistically, we probably hand out more life sentences than, than I either, I don't know if we're number one, number two, anyways. And so they're fighting, uh, their issue is fighting against life sentences, especially when it comes to like, like what, is a, what is a 65-year-old individual going to do at that point right. in time? You know, is it really worth it? And are they costing us even more money being in the, in the, in the penal system yep. and so forth? So anyways, um, we had a conversation and what they told me specifically was, Eric, um, we want, we're, we're working on getting data. And I said, beautiful. I said, listen, you, you ladies and others who are, who are following you and, and others within that criminal justice, you know, kind of reform area, right? Mm-hmm. You can come to legislation and cry all you want. And I think some of the stories are, they're, they're endearing and, and I get it. But the legislature can't act on emotions alone. Now, mm-hmm. we probably do at times, you know, with certain elected officials. That's fine. It is what it is. But I'm just telling you, come with the data. Yep. Because there's, man, the data, you, it's hard to argue data. And if you come to us and say, look, this is where we're at. There's how much money we're spending, blah, blah, blah. And there was another lady that I met with that came into our office to, uh, talking about just things in criminal justice as well. Because unfortunately, um, her son, you know, had a, it was a DUI wreck and, and, and then killing somebody and so forth. But uh, as unfortunate as that is, you know, it just seems like we're, we're passing, you know, we're doing things to be tough on crime, but we're not looking at, you know, we're doing that. But at the same time, it seems off. Mm-hmm. Like you could get a DUI, let's say in Jacksonville, and you maybe get eight years and you're done. But if you go into a smaller county, let's say you may get end up 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And so my point is, is that, and, or you get some individual who may, you know, who may have, um, who may be in jail for 25 years prior to that individual being an adult. So they were in already at 16 years old. And then you get an individual who probably shook a baby, right. And is getting five years and then they're on three, four years of parole. And so my point is all that is data based and that's what they're talking about. And so. The point I'm bringing locally here is, to your right, is that, look, man, the data is going to tell us everything. And so the, what I see Brandy doing a lot of times, and folks like Brandy, is bringing data to the city. Yep. And I think what frustrates a lot of folks is sometimes on the dais is they feel like the data is being smacked in their face a little bit. And they're going to go. And, and I don't know. And once again, I don't know how, how accurate her information is. But I would I'm probably gonna say pretty fucking accurate. I would suggest it's probably going to be pretty accurate. And yeah. I know sometimes we don't want to acknowledge the bad within yeah. us a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you know this better than most. Right. When it comes to, you know, these 50 step programs. Right. First thing you got to do is acknowledge the wrong in you. Right. And acknowledge that wrong. And just Did know you that say 50 step? I don't know. What is it? It's 12. I'm sorry. God. Eric's got a longer program. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm on a 50 step. I'm done. I'm on a 50 step (laughs) life program. Thank you, OG. You're 100% right. My outlook is so much more more, more, more long term. (laughs) Exactly. 12 step, folks. I'm sorry. Maybe I was being a little just hyper, hy- you know, hyperbolic there a little bit. But anyways, you all get my point. <laughs> you need to 50, shut down right now. 50 step. You anyways. Just come here. Just come here. Yeah. Just come here. Okay, brother. He's very flush. His face is already. Uh, <laughs> I, is. I, because I really stepped in. I just, you, you cracked me on. I was like, oh my God, what the hell? Are you, what was I just saying? 50 step. Anyways. Uh, okay. My, okay. My, my point is, come with the data. Um, acknowledge the fact that there is wrong within your city. And then work towards something. You Listen, know what I mean? I so. agree. I agree with that. And here's the yeah. thing. We <laughs> just step. all need to be, <laughs> just, we just need to all 
be more civil to one another. Yeah. I'm, I'm insulated. I am insulated up to a point, but I am still so teachable. You know what I mean? And I try to be because I know there's a different way to do things. So I'm just saying I appreciate so much our residents that get involved. And residents email me and they Facebook all the time with a problem, usually stormwater, yeah. animal related or code enforcement mm-hmm. right and i try to jump right on that stuff to give people give people the sense that somebody's listening yeah. and that they're getting on it so that's what i really really try to do so um you know that, i'm not going to talk anymore about the state attorney's investigation um it, you know they uh, it's done and it's yeah. over with i think that everybody learned uh, that's what i said i think that everybody learned valuable lessons from that and you know people do uh deserve the truth and they deserve you know what i mean to yeah. understand so with that being said i want us to finish out strong with this right. okay i want to let everybody know that um there is a domestic violence seminar yep. that's going to be held in deltona and I would like to thank all that are coming out to put that on. It is very needed. I know that you and I have talked at length mm. um, about um, about domestic yeah. violence, about the need for um, about the need for more oversight when it comes to the justice system. More opportunities for folks, for especially those ladies who are involved in domestic violence, yep. um, and that could be some sort of shelter or something yep. of that nature, and, and I, I, I hear you. Yeah, and I'm going to send this uh, flyer to OG to pop up because um, this is happening on October 25th, 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the center in Deltona. Cool. Foundations to Freedom, who I can't say enough about them. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, they're amazing over there providing um, shelter yeah. for recovery for victims of domestic violence and we really just need more in in the community join us for an informal uh, night to come as you are to be lifted up without judgment to uh, let a f- the affected to know that they are not alone and to connect with advocates um, survivors and carrying community programs and come stand with us mm. unfortunately i will be out of town you know that this is one of yeah. my babies here yep. um, but i've been called away to kentucky for business um so i just i i can't say strongly enough in partnership with the neighborhood center with volusia county sheriff's office with the Good. city of deltona uh, they'll be putting this on so it's Kudos really to the city really for doing that too as well yeah. really really important yeah. one of the things that um i will begin to be talking about as we get near to session and talking to some of our legislators regarding the uh record for ordering injunctions yes. okay at current there is no requirement for judges to disclose how many injunction orders they sign uh or don't sign mm-hmm. here um i'm telling you from personal experience i'm not going to mention this judge's name mm-hmm. it will be mentioned later on but i'm not going to mention this judge today uh, but was with a domestic violence victim um at the the courthouse trying to get an an injunction order and there was enough there that i would be scared of this person if they were my spouse this woman had three children two which were on the autistic spectrum Mm. severely and this woman actually had to move out of her house instead of the husband being taken out of the house she had to move out and try to find shelter with three children yeah now i know that we contacted a place who has been under controversy recently about getting this woman didn't they didn't have anything for her which is very frustrating we don't have enough domestic violence shelters here to shelter the women that need to be taken care of and the judge in this case made us come back two days and provide more than 15 total pages of narrative 15 pages a woman under stress trying to handle three daughters all under 10 years old in an office okay for two days and then uh, said no. no and i was so enraged they sent a deputy sheriff because i was getting yeah. so upset with this particular judge i know that he has a crappy record okay because that same day i was in there with the woman whose child had been thrown into a fence and the judge said no on a protective order also to that woman with that narrative this judge needs to be called out you will be called out and i'm going to tell you that for these protective orders and here's the thing that there is no data 
right? First of all, for us to analyze, to say what's happening. And, you know, you need voter data because we're voting for these judges. Yeah. And you don't get that. You don't have a clear picture of where they stand. Yeah. They're not required to report this. You know what this does also? Since the federal government has foreseen to taking away advocacy money from us, we don't have any data that we can come back to the state or county or cities with to say, mm -hmm. we have this much stuff going on. Um, and these judges are saying, no, we need protection for these women or we need housing for these women not being reported you know why because the judges don't have to disclose their record there's no record data set being kept on domestic violence so and it goes back to the earlier point that i was making about data right and which is important because everything that's guided up in tallahassee either policy wise and or money is done through data mm -hmm. right so to your so what I'll say on the, on the issue of the judge is, first of all, folks, there is nothing, and I wonder about where some where some folks' heads are at, especially with men. There's nothing emasculating about, you know, well, if, if I issue this order of protection or something like that, like, do I become less of a man because I'm trying to favor a woman? Look, let's all let's all be honest with ourselves. Probably eight to nine times out of ten. It is usually a woman on the receiving end of it. I'm not yep. saying it doesn't happen to men, yep. especially there is some instances where you're seeing a little bit on the rise, but nine times, eight to nine times out of 10, it is usually a woman on the receiving end. Yep. And let's all just be, let's do the right thing, right? And that's what we should always be doing is the right thing and recognize the fact that there are women out there getting beat by their husbands, their piece of bull crappity, shiggity, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. husbands. Right and and or boyfriends and they're in they should be ordering these the um they should be put signing these orders of, of protection. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You're protecting someone and their children potentially. But that said, this goes beyond just a judge and his or her own personal whatever it may be. This really for me comes down to as crappy as that is. Um, this comes down to me about the data. Bottom yep. line, mm -hmm. you cannot get funding for things and or make policy changes on the way things without are done data. without that data. That's what yep. it really comes and down they don't, to. They, here's the thing that I find it. I find it incredible that mm -hmm. they don't have to provide this data, especially on something this serious. You know that the, uh, I think it's the VOCA funds are getting cut now by the federal government. Mm -hmm. This, what these funds do is uh, pay for our advocates because yeah. the sheriff department has advocates, domestic violence advocates. These are people that help navigate victims mm -hmm. through the system. Yeah. We don't have enough of that. The system is complicated. I want to pull my hair out the day that I went. Yeah. When you're asking a woman that's been traumatized, that has been threatened with death, that has her three children, right, mm -hmm. that barely has a way to go, and you're sitting there, and she writes a seven-page narrative one day, and the judge said, oh, that's not enough. I read that. I'm pretty detail-oriented. Yeah. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you even kidding me right now? Come back. You come back tomorrow. Write more. 15 pages of narrative it's, to this judge, this BS judge, yeah. Volusia County judge, you know who you are, Volusia County judge that did this. And then when I asked, I said, can I see this judge's record, please? How many injunctions? Oh, we don't keep that information. WTF yeah. do you mean? You yeah. don't keep this. You don't keep it for legal reasons? Like, how does somebody... How does somebody deduce it? Whether this judge has been doing? How do you unfortunately, like, like, look, and this happens in any state, right? Unless you, unless it's in law somewhere. I'm I, listen. Yeah. Here, here's what I'm saying right now, and you know this. I am working on legislation for that. Okay. I am holding people hostage right now, <laughs> and I have had some great people step up to the plate to say, I'm really interested in that. Yeah, some legislators. So please know that I'm coming after that. That yeah. is going to be my thing for this year. Yeah. Um, you're going to see me in Tallahassee. Okay. You're going to see me in Volusia County. You're going to see me at county meetings. You're going to see me at city meetings talk about it. It's coming together right now, but you just wait. I, yeah. I know that one of our senators that I spoke to said, "Say what?" When yeah. I told when I told him that that yeah. there was no, he said, "What? That doesn't that doesn't seem right." I, you even looked into it, I believe. Yeah, I did, and so and there's not, and what I was told um, early on when you when you actually first asked me about a year ago. Um, it's the same thing. They don't normally keep records of that stuff and they won't because, and, 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 and look, and there, here's the reality. They won't because it's not in law. They're not required to do so. Yeah, we're going to so, change now that. You may have, there may be a county or two or so, there may be a, a couple of judges out there that may keep some sort of records because maybe they feel um, it's the right thing to do. But the vast majority, I would say 99.9% .9 of them are not going to keep certain records if they're not told to, told to in, in, by law. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like anything else, right? If, 
that, that happens a lot. And it's not just Florida, folks. This is anywhere you go. Um, you know, the, the, the fact that something may not be in the law, everybody goes, well, look, the fact that it's not there means that, you know, we you know don't what? have to. These are the same judges that leave their carts in, in front of other people's cars in the, in the shopping lot. <laughs> you might be right. They are. <laughs> they do that. You know what else they do? Yeah. They pee on the floor in the middle of the night. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And wait for their wives to clean it up. That's who these people are. You may be right. I am. I'm um, right. Hey, these actually, are the ones was... that don't tip waitresses. These yeah. are the same, like, the holier than thou. Yeah. This is this is them. This is um, they actually that provided a little bit of a segue on. I know you want to kind of close up, but something just popped into my mind uh, just really quick. We haven't done this in a while. So, uh, obviously, with everything that's going on around the world, uh, really quick, and just, you know, with the stuff that's going on in Israel, Ukraine, whether you agree or not with the policies or set any other, there are um, individuals, uh, and it's a reminder for, for veterans. Uh, we're coming up on Veterans Day, and myself as a veteran, I'll just tell you that, you know, uh, but Veterans Day is coming up soon, here shortly, a couple weeks, mm-hmm. and I want to uh, let everybody know, give a shout out to your veterans, and also, and if you see one, you know, thank them, or at least, res- you know, just respond to them, or just tell them, hey, thank you very much much or talk to a vet there's a lot of them out there that need help but there's also a lot of more just or also giving back to the community and the same i would also say the same goes for our first responders firefighters uh cops uh, law, or just law enforcement in general i should say um you know you know just be mindful be respectful and thank them very much what they do because with some of the wrongs that you see sometimes the vast majority are trying to do right yeah and, I, and you know, whether you agree with the policy that's going on internationally with Look, man, you know, when you when, the, when these folks sign up to become to go into the military, they're not there to ask questions on the particular policy. They're just told to go and that's mm-hmm. it. And and I will tell you that we don't in this country always we try hard. We try, but we don't always treat them the way they should be treated. And they come back with issues. And, issues, I, and I go yep. back to this thing about you with your with this 15 pages poor lady had to do. I will tell you that my father in law was trying to give PTSD because he had issues there for, for a long time. And he still suffers with P, uh, not only PTSD, but also just other things from Vietnam. Right. I will tell you, man, they made him write a book. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, did you not know that the man was sitting there? There's no record of this man being there at that siege of whatever. And he was there for all them days and how that's going to wear on individuals. Yeah. And now you want this guy to go back and, and write a damn book? Is yeah. that where we're at in, in, in this country? We got to tell our yes, veterans to you know, write, tell them to, you know, write a book. Mm-hmm. I got a friend of mine, her husband, Iraq War, and Afghanistan, all that stuff. And she's fighting like hell. And she's been doing it for about a year now. And it's just like, and I told her, sweetie, you're going to have to stay on top of it because mm-hmm. it's just the way it is. And some congressman offices work better than others. I know when Congressman Mike, and this is no knock on anybody else, please. Actually, when Congressman Mike's office was around, um, um, I will tell you that they also did, they did an awesome job in trying to get folks, um, if they, you know, a disability, especially our veterans, for because many of them, they, when they come back, you know, all me- messed up. And I hate to put it out, but it's reality. When they come back messed up, some of them don't realize what they qualify for. And that money can probably go a long way to helping them and their families out in, in many ways. Right. Yeah. And so just we're coming on Veterans Day. <coughs> I want to say this also. I want yeah. to, um, uh, you know, a prayerful prayer for all of those involved in war that people will lay their guns down. You know, yeah. imagine I hear that repetitively in my head with John Lennon. I would like to give a shout out to to. Um, Congressman Corey Mills. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he did, he did he, some good stuff did. this past week. He did, yeah. but here's the thing I want to say too. So is our president. It yeah. doesn't have to be either or. It doesn't. Yeah. It can be in addition to. So I want to thank him in addition to what our government is doing. I would yeah. like to thank him for that because he's a stand-up guy. You know, he called me when I found out I was diagnosed uh, with cancer. Congressman and Mills he, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he's checked in since then. And so... Uh, thank you for that. Um, but you, you, you know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. That's, yeah. that's where we're trying to go. It doesn't have to be one or the other, yeah. you know, people can uh, chip in and help. And mm. that's complicated so, too. A lot of times, yeah, you it, know? It, it, exactly. It yeah. is. So anybody that has the gall, listen, whether you are at a city level or a national level, if you step in to help, you need to be recognized. And I think that that's what we try to do. I yeah. try to do that in recognition of people that really do want to make a difference. Good. You know what I'm saying? I, I salute you. I take my hat off. Whether you are a disgruntled resident, whether you work at a county level, whether you are a fat checker, whether you are a bulldog, whatever you are, mm-hmm. I want to thank you for getting involved because that's really what matters. Yeah. You know, because you can't turn the soil up 
You can't have good policy made. You can't have good dialogue unless you turn the ground up. And that yeah. needs to be done. Everybody needs to be accountable. And one of my things, one of my tenets when I ran for office is still part of my mission statement is that I have the belief that we are equally responsible to one another. Yeah. That I am responsible to you as your commissioner to ferret out, suss out, and try to solve problems that you bring to me. And you have the responsibility of being my partner in government mm-hmm. and bringing up things that are concerning to you because yeah. you know so many people are so involved with their lives how do you know what's yeah, bothering and, them and, and, and I don't agree and that's part of humanity I think you can still be an individual mm-hmm. um, but also recognize that you have we all have a certain a certain level I'm not saying full resp- full responsibility because I'm right. not going to get into that because then some are going to say that's you know big government or big whatever and I'm not saying right. that I'm just talking on a personal level yeah. I think we all have a little bit of responsibility to one another so yep, we do indeed yeah. we do indeed oh, all right. what a good day today what a good show yeah. hey you know what I want to start doing in January too yeah. boss OG. Yes. Uh, on the month now, since we're doing Guns and Hoses calendar, I would like to feature on our screen the the person. <laughs> the, I would the like guy to for shout the out. The yes. <laughs> sure. We got chicks too. We got chicks too. Were they on there as well? I didn't yeah. get, okay, Did right. you not buy a calendar? Did you buy a calendar, Eric Ramundo? I'm having a good cigar here right now. Just, oh, wow. He's still on his 50 step program. He hasn't got that. <laughs> 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 I'm only going to let you off the hook. You're going to buy them for Christmas you, presents, you. okay? Yeah. Right. I'll buy one for my wife. No, you're going to buy a couple. You're going to give them out to your girls up in Tallahassee. Volusia, Guns and Hoses. I don't know what girls you're talking that about. That might be an but... HR problem. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, I, yeah, Dana, it's going to be, you, did you know that Raimundo's giving out calendars? Of half-naked people? Of um, half-naked people, and only to, me, like, the, ladies. The women, women of Tallahassee will love you for oh that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, guys, it's been another interesting week. Uh, Thank yeah, you for being with been. us. Um, we're looking forward to next week and the week after. Thank you for joining us. Yep. Remember to write us, call us. You can yeah. click us on Facebook. Candidates, if you're out there, let us know, please. One, one, one already did. So Again, hey. listen, yep. I want to remind you, please be at our domestic violence. The um, information will be up on a flyer on the screen for you. Um, to take a look at if you know someone that needs help, if you are someone that needs help to come together there, you will be protected um, and you will get a great deal of resources. So thank you. Thank you, Katie and Barb Gertman for uh, putting this together. Thank you, City of Deltona for participating. Thank you, Terry Ellis for being so involved also. I love Terry Ellis. Terry Ellis will smack you around too. (laughs) <laughs> I love her so much. She's always been nice to me, so yeah. there's no reason yeah. for no, that smack and stuff. She'll yeah. slap you. I just stay and away she brings from chicken soup when you're sick, so oh, that's right. it. She's one of my besties. Right. Anyways, listen, guys, thank you again for joining us. And remember yep. that if it's important to you. It's important to us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This has been The Smoking Truth with Dana McCool and Eric Ramundo. Listen for new episodes every Tuesday at 8 a.m. This has been a Mike and Mike production.